classrooms where children are engaged in sustained, shared thinking. A classrooms where problem-based learning will be happening, where children are actually able to consider inquiry and to inquire about the world, and where they may indeed be thinking about critical literacy and critical higher order thinking uh, by engaging together, by thinking about what other children within their spaces are thinking by thinking about a variety of perspectives and coming to an understanding that the world is not uh, something that has a right and a wrong, but that in fact people think differently. I have some sad news. Last week there was a big storm and my house collapsed. <gasps> Do you have any ideas? Please write back to me if you can help. From your friend, Sparkles the Tooth Fairy. When you get yours, I would like you to just draw what you can imagine the Tooth Fairy's house might look like. And then we'll put all our ideas together and come up with a really special house for the Tooth Fairy. I set that up, activity up for thinking to occur by initially asking the children just to do their own drawing. There was their own ideas from the stimulus of the, of the Tooth Fairy letter. So they were captivated, they were interested. It's very relevant to these children at the moment because lots of them are losing their teeth. But it was just their little note taking, clarify their own thoughts in their heads and build on their own thoughts as they were doing it to then share with the class. A light. A light for the Tooth Fairy. Why do you think the Tooth Fairy's house needs a light out the front? I like it. Um. So she can see. So she can see. When does she fly again? At night. She flies at night time. So why do you think a light out the front of her house might be a good idea? So she can see where she's flying. The purpose of sharing their thinking was to, to build on the ideas, to recognise other people's ideas um, as, as positive things and to help them extend their own thoughts and extend their own designs. They could just have a look at, oh, that was a good idea. I can include that and I can adapt mine this way and that. So just, um, you know, more ideas, more brains to, to create it, to build on their, on their own initial one. Using all those ideas that we've come up with, see if you can have another go at drawing a beautiful, strong, big house. I gave the children time to think to start with. I like to think that every child has full of imaginative ideas and I want them to be able to express their own ideas and not always be led by the first child who's answered the question. Therefore they've had a chance, they've done their own thinking, they've got it down there on paper and they could then throughout the lesson build on their ideas with everybody else's but they've got their own ownership of it and haven't had to just copy from someone else. Fairy. Fairy, why did you write that there? Because they know which house is the fairy's house. So they know where it's the tooth fairy's house. And then over here is what you designed after hearing everybody else's ideas. And you've now got a house. Tell me about all about this one again. Um, those are the books and those are the teeth and that's the sparks and those are the lights and that's the dawn. That's an extreme extremely important thing for our children in classrooms to be learning. Learning to understand about other people's perspectives, learning how to get on together, learning how to lead and how to follow and actually understanding that by working together and collaborating and understanding um, each other's perspectives that we indeed ourselves are learning a lot more than we might if we were thinking in a more individual sense.